In the gradient parameters box, we have the separation of the two sensors, 1.5 meter. We have the magnetic sensor channel number one. We list that as number one. We have the magnetic sensor number two channel, which is channel two. The gradient type will be pseudo-analytic signal. We could uh, compute the horizontal gradient, or if we had a third sensor, we could compute the analytic signal. But we have found that the pseudo-analytic signal duplicates the final results of the third sensor analytic signal. And so therefore, we can do with two sensors what uh, three sensors, uh, acquiring three sensors uh, worth of data would provide. The uh, vertical separation, we're uh, computing that as 1.5 meters. So we're up, upward continuing the vertical gradient as though that third sensor were at 1.5 meters. We save into uh, a data file. I'm saving it as a demo grad.dat file. We want to load the data upon completion, so we check this box and we want to remove the median prior to operation. By removing the median in the data, the analytic signal uh, is a smoother representation and also tends to remove the geology and provide us just those anomalies which are of interest on smaller wavelengths. Okay, we click OK and we are now computing the gradient. We're splitting the lines, 56 profiles were loaded. Okay, we've now loaded the analytic signal grid map, and we see that there is only one data per line. So we, we, we no longer have the, the dual uh, lines, the dual, dual data files per line, but in fact now we have computed the analytic signal, which is represented as a single traverse. Again, we can uh, go to New and open the Profile view so that we can see the individual profiles. I'll expand the box. We can see right away that the data is higher frequency, that some of the, uh, the geology has been removed. Uh, we can go to File and open the browser so that we can look through individual analytic signal profiles. We can see that there are higher frequency components. And we can see that the majority of the anomalies are very high frequency, meaning that they are actually objects on the seafloor. Okay, when we have gone through the 56 lines, and we can see that as we select line by line, it's showing us on the, the gridded profile map where these lines are located. We select one by one and go through and make sure that we don't have anything that's completely out of range or anomalous uh, beyond the, the, the realms of, of the other data files, the other data profiles. Okay. Now we're, we're able to build and actually con uh, do the contouring of this data file. So we select profiles, interpolate grid. And we'll use a spline grid. We're going to select the intervals at approximately half a meter. Uh, one meter or half a meter, I'm going to change these to one meter. The, um, the gridding, of course, is done on a uh, X and Y uh, coordinate uh, surface. And so um, to grid it, uh, even though we're sampling more than um, uh, one meter, faster along the line than one meter, one meter uh, in the X and Y direction is sufficient for this gridding. The tension is set at 0.25. This is, this is how tight the contour will fit the data. Uh, low constrained, we can constrain it by the minimum data. High constraint can be the maximum data. Um, the format is NetCDF. This is a uh, form of, uh, of gridded data that is the industry standard. Iterations we set at 2500. We set the convergence limit to zero. This actually allows the program to select its own limitations in the uh, algorithm of doing the interpolation. 
So when we set it to zero, it means that if the uh, fit between the gridded data, the gridded value, and the actual data uh, is not improving, then the uh, algorithm, the, the procedure stops. So we set that to zero. Uh, channels, we can set that to one. Uh, there's only one channel here. And then um, we, so we recommend that you click this filter data, which is using median value. The median value, again, um, allows the, uh, the, uh, the, the analytic signal to remove the uh, geology and also to uh, present the data in the best possible manner. We're going to output the file as, uh, I'm going to select data grids dot nc <clears throat> and we'll select OK. And now it's doing the iterations. Uh, you'll see that the discrepancy between the data and the grid is now down to 0.02. It's done uh, 700 iterations. Of course the speed with which it does this process uh, is based on the speed of the computer. Uh, this, com this particular computer is an i7 uh, processor. Okay, it says actual bitmap image is 2116 by 2864 pixels. This can slow down on uh, or sl the PC. Yes, to continue with this resolution, no to automatically reduce the cell screen size. And I'm just going to click yes here. Uh, as we can see, the uh, map uh, now shows each individual anomaly. Uh, individually presented in a uh, color coding. By the way, we, we can uh, change the, uh, the amount of uh, palette, the, the type of palette we use. The palette type is uniform and um, we've selected palette number 22 which is uh, often used for analytic signal. Uh, the reason why is because the low end of it is uh, is white, and remember that that we have actually uh, uh, made the map uh, with median removal, which means that all of the anomalies are positive, and that the minimum value is zero. So if we set the palette from uh, uh, from zero uh, uh, values and up, then we get just the uh, the analytic signal uh, contour map and the base map is white in the bottom. Um, we can also uh, put the actual profiles uh, on, or off the, on or off the data set here. Uh, again, see now we've removed the profiles or again we go to options, settings and uh, we can put the profiles on there. Uh, we, can even, we can even show the uh, stack profiles if we want to on these individual contour lines. Again, options, settings, we can show profiles. By the way, to get these profile uh, menu boxes to pick up, uh, you unclick it and re-click it and the profile name of the profile dialog box will come up. Unclick the plot stack profiles and, and now we can see the uh, individual profiles and the uh, contour lines from the analytic signal map. This could be printed out on a color printer and there are additional surrounds information that we can put on text, north arrow and so forth. So this is a brief introduction into generating an analytic signal map using MagPIC. Uh, there are many procedures and processes here that we haven't gone into but uh, we wanted to give you an introduction to give you an idea of the power of the program. We would welcome any questions. Please send an email to sales at geometrics.com and we'll make sure they're answered promptly. Thank you.